Thank you. That was great. Thank you. I got two extra percents there. All right. How's everybody doing? I have a quick announcement. I'm sure everybody heard that uh, there might be a strike November 14th, which is a special day because it's the day before our midterm. Uh huh. So, uh, what happens if there is a strike? First, let me speak with the experience. Keep going. Better? Better. Yeah? Okay. Uh, experience says that negotiations always get done the day before of the strike, right? So Sunday evening, the hope is that uh, the parts involved will get to a very good, uh, <laughs> very good uh, understanding and everybody is going to get what they want and life goes on normally. Let's say if that doesn't happen, well, if that doesn't happen, that means that um, uh, there might be a strike. If there is a strike, uh, should you just go, woohoo, no midterm? No. Uh, don't do that. Uh, just assume that there will be a midterm because the, once the strike starts, negotiations get better and uh, so on. So, there will be a midterm. Yes. Um, what is the only case that there will not be a midterm and the midterm will be postponed? If there is a strike that goes on until Tuesday, 7 p.m., okay? So, best thing you can do is study, study, and study, and study, and assume that there will be a midterm. Well, if you don't have the midterm then, uh, there will be another day that there will be a midterm and at least you already studied, okay? But um, we'll see what happens. If there is a strike, what does uh, on Monday? Uh, that means there is no discussion. That means that there is uh, no lab. Um, if there is a strike still on Tuesday, that means there is no lab and there is but there is class, unless we decide to strike, huh? Strike, strike, uh -huh. No lecture this uh, Friday, it's a university holiday. <laughs> tomorrow? Don't forget that. No, this Friday, yes. This Friday, there's no lecture, university yeah. holiday. But tomorrow, let's not give lecture either. No. Yeah, okay, cancel lecture tomorrow. All right, but lecture today goes on, go ahead. I'll make sure that happens. Epic. Epic, because discussion on, on Monday is a review for the midterm of Tuesday. So, yeah, <coughs> thank you. Previously on ECS 16A. Previously, yes. Are you going to teach? Can I? Oh, no, 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 let me teach. <laughs> Previously in here, uh, we have been talking about um, blocks, and building blocks for circuits and building blocks that give us um, a pretty good foundation to start designing. So today, uh, the only block um, that I have not uh, discussed with you yet uh, that is in this table is the, the, unit, uh, the unit gain uh, buffer. So, in our designs today, we're going to use that block, and then you would have seen all of them, all the blocks here that use amplifiers, op amps, and but also the voltage divider, the voltage summer. Should you, should you print out this for your midterm? Oh yeah, you should, right? Because then you can look at this uh, nice table that we prepared for you, and you know uh, the analysis. And you even know that this is in, in negative feedback because we checked all of them in negative feedback, right? When we were doing the design, we were like, oh, where should, go, where should the plus and the minus go so that it's in, in negative feedback? Okay, 
So today we're going to formalize uh, design procedure. How do we do design? Okay, so first the design, and uh, we have been doing this without this formalization. Uh, ever since we start to looking at um, uh, resistive touch screen, uh, I have been talking to you with the same language that we are going to use here for design. So the first thing is, you get a specification, right? And that specification should very clearly give you your goals, your goals for design. Even in discussion yesterday, you already had a little bit of designs with blocks, right? So that's, that's uh, where we are going here. That was the goal of this class. Then, step two. Step two, you, you have to describe your strategy. And you describe your strategy mostly using block diagrams, just like when you learn um, uh, the, the feedback um, uh, here. Um, I had some block diagrams that I was telling you, uh, okay, this is signal in, this is signal out, this is signal feedback. So uh, to do your, your design, um, you do the same. You describe your design in a block diagram. So if I was describing the design that we had for the capacitive touch screen, we had an input that could be touch or no touch. So I'm saying here, there is an input, that's what the arrow here is saying, it's an input that tells you that there is touch or no, or no touch. Then, one of the things that we had to do in that design was to convert touch to capacitance. Why? Because the blocks that we built the screen with were capacitors. And we knew and we showed in our designs that there was a change in capacitance if we were touching or no touching. So the first block was converting touch, which is mechanical, to capacitance. Then we said, okay, but um, this capacitance change was not really great. It was a very small change in capacitance, so it would really be in the noise, it would be difficult for us to really say from certainty that there is touch or that a certain pixel of the screen is, um, is being used. Then we came up with another block, something else, that had to convert the capacitance to voltage because then it's much more convenient to measure the voltage on the outside, right, than to go there and measure the capacitance. So we had a block that was converting capacitance to voltage. So then our input that was touch or no touch, and we had an output that was voltage, and voltage we knew how to measure. Yeah? That's just a, a small example of how you would describe your strategy with block diagrams. Okay, then you have to implement. Implement your our strategy and that is when you decide what functionality you need or what are the tools that you're going to use from this box. Plus, don't forget, we always use open circuits, we have um, switch, oh. we have also switches that we can use, we have wires, uh, we have uh, resistors, we have just isolated capacitors that we can use, right? We have all sorts of elements that we have been uh, using and learning their functionality here. So after you describe your strategy with your block diagrams, you go and say, okay, this block has to be doing this function. And this function, I know how to do. I'm going to use a capacitor, or I am going to use a switch, right? Or I'm going to use a deck. Um, okay, then you implement. Once you implement your strategy, um, you have to verify, right? And the ver verification is very important now, because when you're building a system and you pick um, and you pick your uh, 
functionality of your block, you don't want to be changing the functionality of one block or having that block behave strangely because you connect it to a second block, right? So if in my first block there, convert touch to capacitance, I had a capacitor, I don't want my capacitor to behave in a different way if I connect my capacitor to a voltage source. The capacitor still needs to give me the functionality that it was designed for. In the voltage source and vice versa, the voltage source cannot be behaving strangely because I connect the voltage source to a capacitor. Both blocks have to keep their functionality. So in this step verification, is when you check for weird stuff. Oh, did I, is this really doing what I intend my, that my system would be doing? Um, so, four simple steps, right? The first step comes from somebody else. Uh, it could come from you. Oh, today I woke up, it's raining. I want to design a heat lamp, right? And there you go. Uh, and then you put the spec. And uh, then you decide how you're going to do that. What's your strategy? You decide which components you need to buy in order to design that. And then you verify to make sure that um, your heat lamp is going to be working according to your wishes or your specs. All right, and here in design, we are going to be using um, the concept of cascading blocks. Uh, what does that mean? That will help you with the verification. So it's just a way of representing this implementation step and the verification step with uh, tools that you have learned so far. So let's say if we pick um, a, uh, a certain block, which I'm calling here block F, and block F has a function, what we want is that we will have a certain input here coming into block F, and then we will connect block F with another block that I'm calling block G that has also a function. And we still want block F to be block F and block G to be block G, right? A resistor and a voltage source, or a capacitor and a DAC, you name it. Whatever our blocks were, we want them to function the same. And then, of course, we'll have an output that comes from this system. And this output will be an output that is the combined functionality of the blocks. So even though you are using two blocks and you're maintaining their functionality, the output will be a combination of the functionality of those blocks. And there should be a good reason to put those blocks together, okay? So the way that uh, we can check or we can formalize this is the following. I can say, okay, if I have this block F and this block F will have a signal in that is coming in and then there will be some signal here. Once I connect this lead or this wire that is coming out of my block F to my next block G, I want this point here, that is just the wire connecting the two blocks, to be the same before and after connection, right? So if I start with um, measuring something here at this end and after I connect, if I measure again at, uh, um, at this node, I should measure the same thing, right? So how can we uh, model this? Well. We have, uh, we have all the tools that we need. If I tell you, okay, it's this class, linear systems, uh, then you can say, okay, I can model both blocks here as Thevenin equivalent, right? And Thevenin equivalent, simplest possible circuits that you can have uh, represented in a linear uh, IV curve would be a resistor and a voltage source. So I'll say my block F here, I'm going to represent as a voltage source, squiggly signal there to represent a signal, not just straight on uh, voltage, okay? So signal could be any signal, could be temperature, could be sound, could
could be any signal that we want to introduce here in our design. And I'm calling this uh, V Tevenin F. So the equivalent voltage for block F. And then uh, in my design, I put a resistor, which I'm calling R Tevenin F. So it's the equivalent resistor for block F. And then right here in this uh, point, um, let me pick another color. I'm going to say right here, there will be a potential U that I'm going to call U mid L for left. Okay, other block. Other block, I'm going to use the same model. I'm going to say linear systems is going to be a linear representation of a functionality that I know that I can represent using Tevenin equivalence. And I do the same. So I'm calling this signal that is characteristic of block G, V, Tevenin G, and the resistance, which is the equivalent resistance of that block, resistant R Tevenin G, okay? And right here in the middle, I'll say there will be a potential that um, I am going to call U mid, because the potential right in the middle of these blocks, R, R for right, okay? Left, right. Okay. So this is just a representation, right, of our design. So now we're going to start verifying this design. So if we look at this equivalent before connection, before connection, what is U mid L? That's a question for you. For connection, you just look at block, the blocks that I have there. And uh, U mid L is the potential that I'm, I'm measuring right there uh, at block F. And I, the question I have for you, before connection, before connection, what's U mid L? Thank you. U mid L is equal to voltage Tevenin F, right? This is the equivalent voltage of block F. Very good. Clear? Yeah. Okay. That's just what's there. Now, in order to put these uh, two blocks together, let's connect them with a wire right there. Now we analyze what is going to be U mid L after connection. So I'm going to write here, after connection. And then I expect that you have the answer. After connection, question is, what is now U mid L? How would you go about finding out what's U mid L now that these two uh, components are connected? What uh, tool would you use? What is the technique that uh, you would use? What do you have in your pocket that you say, I know exactly what to do? Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. wait. Would you use superposition? You use superposition. Somebody said voltage divider. We are going to get there, but first we need to use superposition. Why? Because the moment I connected these two blocks, look what happened. One voltage source, V Tevenin F. Second voltage source, V Tevenin G. So I have to use superposition in order to find what is you need um, left now. Only if you want to make it simple. Only if you want to make it simple, yeah. I mean, you can use more complicated ways. But why would we? Okay, so how do you do a uh, superposition? You say one source goes to zero, analyze the circuit when that source is zero, then you say plus, 
other source goes to zero, analyze the circuit when that source is zero, and you know that your answer will be the sum of the, of the response if the other source was zero. So in our case here, what would we do? Let's first say if this source here is zero, okay? There is no V tabnant G. Now you can say, what's U mid L in that case? No source G. Now it's going to be which tool? Voltage divider, what's that? What's the divider? Oh, that's voltage divider. divider. Okay. All right. So I'm going to write that when I know, when I know uh, V tabn and G, um, U mid L is going to be equal to voltage divider. And the voltage divider will be R tabn and G over R tabn and G plus R tabn and F times V Tevenant F. K. Plus, now what do we do? Still using superposition. Now we are going to know the other voltage source, the voltage source from block F, and we do the analysis of U mid L here when that source is known. So what is the um, um, U mid L when we know um, the voltage tabnan for block F? What would be the best model? Two. Voltage divider again, right? Because you're measuring U mid L here between these two resistors when you have a voltage source there. So in that case, when V tabnan F is known, we are going to say that U mid L is going to be R tabnan F over R tabnan F plus R tabnan G times V tabnan, oh, tabnan G. Okay, now verification step. Did we do something right here? Or did we change things? Did we change things? Did we do things right when we connected these two blocks? In other words, is U mid L before connection equal to U mid L after connection? No. No, so first the answer would be no way. So this connection somehow is changing things, which was the first thing I told you here, that when we put two blocks together, you have to make sure that things are not changing. Well, are there conditions, are there conditions where you could see this system actually not having a violation? Is there a condition that you can think or impose to your system where U mid L will be equal before and after connection? connection? Think, think, think. Uh, Idea? Yeah, if you use like a op amp or voltage dependent source, so just like copy it over without changing it. In other words, you're saying add another element. Yeah, it's true. We can, we can, yes, yes, <laughs> we can add an element to isolate. That's what we did in our design for the speaker, right? But before we do that, we are going to do that. Before I do that, I want you to look at this and say, are there conditions that you can establish here to make UL, U mid L be equal before and after, after connection? What would be other specifications that you can give to your system to make that condition valid? Uh, if R Tevenant F was zero. Um, if R Tevenant F was zero, let's see. I'll pick a, a different color. If R Tevenant F was zero, um, what would happen? If R Tevenant F was zero, 
then uh, we would have, okay, this term goes, this would be zero, this would be zero, uh, which means that um, what's, uh, you meet L in that case, this would be zero, what would be you meet L? If um, our, our definite F is zero, this becomes a unit, so one times V tevenant F, this becomes zero, so hey, yeah, then U meet L would be equals V tevenant F. That's one condition. So one condition suggested here is that R tevenant F equals zero. Okay, mm -hmm. any other condition? You have a different suggestion? Uh, what's the problem with uh, V tevenant F equals V tevenant G? What was that? V tevenant F equals V tevenant G. Oh, when the two, the two voltage sources are, right, uh, are the same, what's the likelihood that we're going to have uh, two blocks that are providing exactly the same s uh, input or exactly the same voltage? Yeah, zero. 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 That's the likelihood. Other condition. That's just not realistic, right? Yes. A chance in a million that would ha work. We have better, better, better conditions. Man, if only the current could be. Oh, I know. Minimized. Mm. How how would you go about minimizing the current? I'm open to ideas. Um, you are? Okay. Okay, what uh, could do to um, R tevenant G? You could make, oh, such oh. a good idea. It's open. You could make a, a R tevenant G a open circuit. Why? Because if our Tevenant G was behaving uh, uh, as an open circuit, um, then you would get that U meet L equals to zero. Okay, so in this case, in this case, to get the perfect isolation between these two blocks, you would have to assume two things. From the perspective of block F, then R, sorry, let me get my colors right, R Tevenin G, block G, would have to be equivalent to an open circuit, right? That means there's no current, current is minimized, therefore my mid, U mid L is going to be equal to V Tevenin. Okay. Then from the perspective of block G, which is on the other side, then this could only work if our Tevenin F would be equal to zero. If our Tevenin F was equal to zero, then we get that uh, U mid L is equal to before connection. Uh, uh, before and after connection is the same. Okay, but the first suggestion that we got was use another block. Use another block because this type of problems that we are having here, uh, we knew as a loading effect, right? When something is modifying the, uh, the, the output of that block, the, the first block. So the last uh, amplifier that you need to uh, learn here is what we call a unit gain buffer. What? Such a cool block. What? Yeah, a very cool block. What does, uh, what does this block do? Well, in this block you have your amplifier, okay? Um, you connect V in, your signal, which in our case would be the output of um, block F. Uh, you connect to the plus. 
then you connect the minus terminal to V out, okay? Just with a wire, you short it. Okay, so I have ground here. I have V out. Um, let me add the ground here, okay? And um, is this in negative feedback? Wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. Yes? Why do you know? Well, how do you find out if it's a negative feedback? Um, you nudge the output of the op amp. Yeah, you wiggle the output of the uh, op amp. So if the output increases, what happens to the, to the input? Decreases. And then if, uh, if that's uh, uh, increased, then you're going, it's connected here, right? What's going to happen here, you're going to be subtracting, which you're going to get to your next output decrease, which is exactly what you want. You want your next output to be correct. Okay, so it's a negative feedback. If it's a negative feedback, you know that U plus equals to U minus, right? And what's U plus? In this configuration, what's U plus? What's connected right here to the plus terminal? V in. Thank you. And what's U minus? V out. V out. Good. Right? It's connected uh, to V out. So, if we say that U plus equals to U minus, that means that in this amplifier, V in equals to V out. <coughs> huh. It's a nice little block. It does that nothing. That does nothing. It just keeps things apart. Just keeps things the same. It's, it's like separating them with, like it, it's buffering them. It's buffering them. Separating blocks. And it's taking the input of one block and making sure that the output will be exactly the same, which was the problem we, we wanted to solve, right? Let's go back, um, let's go back to our speaker, uh, our speaker example, because in the speaker example, we had that problem and we solved the problem in a completely different way. Um, in the speaker, what we had was, we had the deck, that we model with the Thevenin uh, model, the Thevenin equivalent. And then when we connected to the speaker, we were having this huge uh, loading effect where the voltage of the speaker was uh, um, being, being divided and um, the, we were getting an output that was much, much lower than the voltage of the deck. And the voltage of the deck, when we started with the design, we had that V deck was equal 3.3 volts and the speaker we needed something between 0 to 10 and then once we connected those two blocks like that um, we had a loading effect and we didn't get the party that we wanted. We solved the design back then differently, right? I introduced to you uh, some amplification where we got amplification of 3 in order to get that problem solved. Do you still have a question? Uh huh. The question is: Is the unit the unit gain buffer working as a wire because nothing changed? Is that uh, is that correct? Is the unit gain working as a wire? Would it be no because no current can go through a unit gain buffer? Exactly. You got the answer. Yeah. And it's like it's like wire from one side. And from the other side, it's not. Right, exactly. And the, and the wire is exactly what we had here, right? So we, we put the wire there, and there's current going through. But when you put the unit um, uh, gain buffer here, what's the current? Yeah. Great. Very good. Always ask questions, because then you never forget the answer. 
for node voltage analysis, since the voltages on either side are going to be the same, would you treat them as the same node, or would you have to treat them differently? You are asking, do we have to treat V Tevin and G and F as different? Or like just the nodes on either side of the op amp or the unit gain buffer? I don't understand your question. The so the node on like the left side of the unit gain buffer and then the node on the right side of the unit gain buffer, the voltages will always equal each other. Oh but yeah, V in will always be equal to V out. So if, if you use this block. Okay. Yeah. So if we're doing circuit analysis, we still have to treat them differently. They can't, they're not labeled. Let's do circuit right. analysis, okay? okay? I'm going to use this right now, okay? Because what I want to do is to break this design that we had the problem because the two blocks were connected as, as a wi with a wire. And let's say this could be our block F. This is our block G. And we were having a loading effect. So let's uh, redraw this circuit, putting the, um, the unit gain buffer uh, in the middle. Please go ahead and do it because um, I'm not going to be drawing things for you um, all the time. And uh, meanwhile, I'll draw here too. Okay, so I have uh, R Tevenant of the deck. I have a V deck connected to ground. And now I want to make use of this new block, which is my unit uh, gain buffer. Um, and then I'm going to connect V out to our speaker. Let me do the speaker with the, the color that I had before. So I'm going to uh, connect V out to our model for the speaker, where this was our speaker. I'm just redrawing. I hope you're doing the same. And we want to know what's the voltage across this resistor, because that was the V speaker. Okay. My wires are tilted because I want to finish the connections with the unit gain buffer. So let me connect with red so we know what we are doing. What do I connect to the plus? The line on the left, that is my model for the deck. So I'm going to connect to the plus my deck equivalent. Okay, what do I do with the minus? The minus, since I want to use this as the unit gain, I connect to V out. All right, we already said that this is a, a negative feedback. If this is a negative feedback, that means that golden rules of um, the amplifier apply, which means that we, we know how to do the analysis really nicely. Let me just separate things here. Okay, let's do it. Um, if golden rules apply, I know that um, I plus the current going into the plus is how much? Zero. Zero? Are you sure? No. You're not? It is. I am. Good job, VK. I plus is zero. Okay. What is what is U plus? V deck, correct. Why is V deck? Because current is zero, right? Because I plus is zero. So um, okay, U plus is V deck. Um, now, what's V speaker? Speaker is V out, V out, or, okay, <laughs> V speaker is V out because we connected there. 
which is also equal to u minus, which is also equal to v dec, because we know that u plus equals to u minus, since it's saying negative feedback, so we have v dec equal to v speaker. Would this design work? Yeah, it would, because v dec would be providing 3.3 volts, right? And the speaker would be working with 3.3 volts, so we could still have a party. Better than not, not having that connection. And now it should be really clear for you in, in the design, right? Of the difference between the unit gain and, and a wire. Mm -hmm. Yes? I'm sorry? Oh, it's 0 to 10 volts. So in, other, other, in, in the other the design, we also got to three because we used an amplifier that had a gain of three. Yeah, anything between zero and 10. Very good, okay. How much we learned, huh? So we got VDAC, let's do more examples, more design e examples. So I'll give you the specification and you come up with the ideas and we solve together, okay? Yeah, okay. Thinking, thinking. Okay, first, this is what I want. I want you to design a, uh, um, a system that takes a signal and then process the signal with uh, the function that I put in here, in this block, colored in red. And then you will have a connection to another block and this block will be providing a gain of 10 and then you measure V out. And the question I have for you is, what's V out, right? So V out has to be such that you get a gain of 10 in the end. Then what's the second step of, um, okay, this was the, um, uh, the specs. And with the specs, I gave you the representation, right? Because I already did the block diagrams for you. So uh, how would you design this? So next step comes implementation, okay. Let's implement this. What would be the circuit diagram that you, uh, you draw for the first block? Don't be shy. Voltage divider, right? Okay, so I'll say my red block there will have the function of a voltage divider. And there is a signal, V in. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to have here a voltage source with squiggly um, representing the signal. The signal could be anything, could be a sensor, um, could be anything that um, you want. I didn't specify that. Later, I will specify that. Okay, and then I'm going to have, re uh, I'm going to represent this as a voltage divider. Okay, and I'm going to connect this to ground. Question to you. Is this top resistor R1 or R2? R1, very good, good students. Okay, by elimination, this is R2. Okay, and then this will be uh, the point where I'm going to connect this block to the next block, so I'm going to call this U mid L. All right, found the functionality of first block. What is the block that you're going to use in the second, the pink block there? A circuit that gives you an amplification of 10. So go to your table, your toolbox, and tell me which amplifier are you going to use? It's a 10. What would you use? Non-inverting amplifier. Non amplifier. Yes. Why? Okay, let's go up. 
let's go, okay, here it is. Non-inverting amplifier. Well, if it, why do I know non-inverting? Because I'm not changing the polarity of V out. So I said V in, V out, I don't have a minus there in my gain. So non-inverting amplifier. This is the topography that you want for that block where you're going to have a signal coming in and then you have your amplifier connected to two resistors here and um, we know that it's a negative feedback so we have to make sure that we, we put our plus and minus in the right location. Okay, and now this, the question to you is, so let me make this bigger. Since in the design I said you need a gain of 10, what, what needs to be the value of our top and our bottom in this topology in order to get a gain of 10? And what's gain? Just to remind you, gain is when you have um, a V out over V in, right? 10. How do you get that? V top needs to be? Uh, I was saying that R top needs to be nine times R bottom. That's correct. And then if you have nine R and here you have one R, you have nine plus one, that's 10, non-inverting amplifier, you don't change polarity, it should work. Shall we do it? Okay, I'll go back. Are we good? Do you have questions or just discussions? Just discuss. Just thinking. Okay, I'm going to draw here the amplifier. So I have here where I'm going to connect later with a wire and then I'm going to have the amplifier in this configuration. Top was plus, here was minus, right? Then V out um, here and we had our top, our bottom connected to ground. That was the topography from your, um, from your uh, table, 9R and R, decision we made together in order to get gain of 10. Uh, minus terminal connected to voltage divider right here and here we have V out like that. I hope it's because it's easy. Okay, V out. Do we have everything? Plus minus, plus minus. Now I'm going to call this U mid right, U mid left. We have two blocks. Let's connect with a green wire here. And what do we do to verify? Because that has to be our next step, right? Okay, we have to verify. And how do we verify this? To verify, we have to say, okay, you meet before connection has to be equal to you meet after connection, right? So what's you meet left before connection? Come on, you guys should know this like, there's no tomorrow. We already put it there, right? It would be R2 over R2 plus R1 plus R2 times V in. Okay, that's before connection. Now, when we connected the way we connected here, what's U mid L now? You say the same? Let's see. U mid L is here connected to U mid R. Okay, U mid R is connected to the amplifier on the plus. What's the current going through here? Zero. I plus is zero. Okay, zero. if I plus is zero, zero. then uh, we can say that U mid L equal to you meet right. 
<gasps> okay, that means that we don't have a problem with our connection. Don't have a problem. Yes. Are we done with the ver verification? No, we're not. No. We need to verify the other block. What's the other block? The other block is the amplification. Do we know that this is going to give us an amplification of 10? Yes. yes. Right? Why? Because our V out taken from the table is V in times 1 plus R top over R bottom. And we did that verification before we implemented. Yes. Are we getting good at designing? Yes. Next. Question, are there questions here? Okay, next. I want, yeah. So do we just assume that V ref is zero? Like, because hmm? on the, the table it says like that and then plus V ref times so do we just make v ref equal to zero? Yeah. So you can have a v ref here that it's another voltage source that you might want to connect to the amplifier, right? To compare or to limit or to set a voltage. But in our case, v ref was zero, right? We connected um, this part of the amplifier to ground. So this term goes away. In most of the implementations that we have worked on the amplifier so far, we put, um, um, we, we don't use RF, except in the homework you're using RF. Okay, next design. Oh, oh question? Okay. Uh, how will you like find the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit? Like, I'm sorry? If you wanted to make a like, diamond equivalent for like the right side with a non inverter amplifier, like how would you find that? How do we find, how we decide to use the equivalence there? Oh yeah, how would you like find it for the entire? Yeah, how did I define here? I said, you were saying this, how do I define the equivalent for the, for this block? Like how would you find the equivalent resistance for that side? The like equivalent like resistance for this? Yeah, for that. Is that is that just one plus like is that just ten? The well we didn't find the, the the equivalent resistance for this. We just knew that the output would be given by the ratio of this resistance. Okay, but like couldn't you like draw like another Thevenin equivalent? You could, you could draw another Thevenin equivalent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like if you wanted to do that, then how would you like find the resistance? How how would you do it? Yeah. Uh, what what's the rules of finding the thevenin? It was like you zero out the the input and then you find the resistance without that. Yeah. Okay. You know it. You just disconnected here, right? Okay. Second example. I want this. Okay. Now a system that. You have some sort of uh, volt, uh, signal in, and your first block is going to be a sensor, not telling you what kind of sensor, and then the second block will give you some amplification, an amplification of minus three. Minus three. Hmm. Minus three. Okay. Echo. How would you, what would be, so, okay, first, uh, let's implement our ideas. Or let's come up with blocks that we want uh, in our implementation. Implement. Okay, how could you draw a sensor? What is a circuit that you can use to represent a sensor as a block? Resistor? Could be a resistor. But does that resistor need something else in order to represent a sensor? A sensor, you have a signal that will interact with uh, your block, right? So what would be the best model to represent a sensor? A comparator? Hmm? 
Comparator would compare two signals. What would be a good model that would be a good representation of a sensor block that is linear? Capacitor, voltage source. Dependent. The Thevenin. The Thevenin, right? What is the Thevenin equivalent? Oh, I have a signal, squiggly signal, which is a voltage source. Connect to a resistor, which we had as a suggestion, which can be our Thevenin sensor representing the resistance of the sensor. Connect these to ground, and here I have V Thevenin of the sensor. That's a model that we have been using, right, for a linear, a linear block. Okay. Now, what would we use for the blue block here? That would give you an amplification of minus three. Back, go back, go back, go back. Inverting amplifier? Okay, which one would we use? Inverting An amplifier. inverting amplifier, that's why. Why do we know inverting? Because now my polarity, I said V in, and I'm saying second block there is going to have a minus. So it needs to invert the polarity, that's the inverting amplifier. And now, what needs uh, to be the relation between RS and RF in order to give you an amplification of minus 3? Let me make the, our block here bigger. What needs, uh, what RF and RS need to be in order to give you a minus 3? RF has to be three times bigger than RS. That's correct. Doesn't things get easy now when you're given the right tools? Okay, let's do it. Do it. Draw, connect. Draw, connect, and verify. Why will I draw here? Because I am slower at drawing. So I'm going to draw the inverting amplifier in blue, just like we had there, which will be something like we have RS, and then RS is connected to RF. And we said RF needs to be 3R, and RS is going to be R. Okay, then here, we have the amplifier. Does anybody remember what the polarity was here? What was the top connector? Positive or negative? Negative, always check, okay? Because that table was checked for negative feedback. Okay. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, or you can wiggle, wiggle, yeah. Okay, then we have V out connected here to ground. Did I put uh, all the elements? Yes. Okay, and then this will be humid Right, and this will be humid left, and I'll take a red wire here, connect the two, and then the question is, in order for these to be working, humid left has to be equal um, before and after connection. Okay, <coughs> so, <coughs> hmm? question? Is there a reason why we don't use R Thevenin S as RS? R Thevenin S RS? Yeah, like... You mean, use the equivalent of the sensor as the resistor here? Yeah. Um, oh wait, I see. I think I see why that wouldn't work. Yeah, cool. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you know what this resistance is? Yeah. Well, I mean, no, <laughs> but yes, okay. Okay, uh, all right. Verify, is this connection good? Why are you making that face, Nikki? 
Let's see, before connection. Before connection. Before connection. What's you meet L before connection? Friends, what's you meet L before connection? Vitavnan sensor. Yeah. Okay. What is you meet L after connection? That's right. Okay, after connection, what do we have here? We have you meet L right here in the middle. Oh, we have R, R Tevenin S here. We have R here. And we got ourselves, and we, here is U minus. So mm, we got ourselves in a situation where now you meet L is equal R over R plus R Tevenin sensor times V Tevenin sensor, which is very different from V Tevenin. Okay? Okay, we have a problem in our design. Did we verify the block, the blue block first? So we know that there is a problem with the connection. That means those blocks need to be isolated, right? But let's see if we pick the right blocks to start with. Now, blue block. Blue block, the output that we wanted, the result that we want was minus 3. We got that from the inverting amplifier, which gives us V out equal V in over, oops, sorry, uh, V out, um, V in times uh, minus RF over RS which we chose to give us the right ratio. So we know that this block is good. This block is good if we have a problem with the connection, right? Right here. The connection needs to be changed. Okay, how do you change that? There's a question or an answer or both. Which block would you use to separate them? So I've got a question, but we should use a uh, unity unit gain buffer. Yeah, thing? we should use the unit gain buffer. Why? Because then V in is going to be V, v Tevenin, and V out is going to be equal V in. Solve that problem. Now, ask your question. Uh, so my question is, um, you made after the connection is R over R plus R Thevenin S. Why isn't it, um, why don't you take into account R of RF. Why I didn't take into account RF? Oh, I did. I just used an equivalent resistor. So I pretend that, thank you, this is a very good question. I pretend this uh, amplifier is not there, then this is going to be a R, right? Uh, equivalent resistor of that block. Okay, Excellent you. question. It's not the same R here. I'll say, let me change my writing here for later. I'll say R equivalent. Okay, better? Excellent question. Good to pay attention. Okay, question, Mickey. Right here in the middle. It's like leg a little bit harder. Meanwhile, I'm going to put the unit gain buffer here in the middle. So my question was, I was a little confused about the block diagram because it has V in. So I sort of, when I drew it on my own, I thought it, thought it had a, another voltage source. And I'm just wondering. Oh, you don't need to add another voltage source. V in is just a signal. So there is something coming in that will, and then in our model here for the sensor, we take into account the signal with the squiggly voltage source. Oh, okay. That makes yeah? Sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
So if you put those two apart, let's erase this, uh, this wire that didn't work. And now I'm going to, instead of a wire, I'm going to put the amplifier here, the unit gain amplifier with V in coming here on the plus and then the minus connected to V out. These are my wires. Now we have that U mid L is the same before and after connection. Go ahead. Wait, uh, how did you get U mid uh, R equals R e by R e plus R seven? Equivalent, yeah. That was uh, what he asked there. Uh, so before we only had this, right? So we have one resistor here connected with another resistor. Yep. So two resistors connect. You can just model that as an equivalent resistor. But then isn't it an open circuit at the end? So there's no current flowing, right? So. Oh. There is. Amplifier provides as much current as you want. The amplifier, there's no current going through the amplifier, but you have two resistors connected here, which you can treat them as an equivalent resistor. But also the, the minus and plus, right, uh, because of the golden rule, right, they equaled, they should equal the same, the plus is connected to the ground, right, so the minus is zero. The minus is zero, yeah. So then that's a voltage divider with zero. Okay, I want to do one more design. Um, I, can, I can answer your question later. One more design, which is our uh, third example and we have only 15 minutes left and I want to do this one. This oh, one we, we have visitors. We have visitors. Are you visitors? Yeah. Oh, we're from? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, nice to see you. Thanks wow. for visiting Welcome us. Welcome to Berkeley. Yeah, this is electrical engineering class. Say hello, say hi. <laughs> you, you're free to come in if you want. All right, one more example. This example, okay, pay attention to this specification. Your boss comes to you and asks to build a countdown timer, countdown timer that will turn a, a light emitting diode, an LED, uh, two seconds after a button is pressed, okay? So now it's a uh, much uh, different uh, the way uh, the problem is given to you. And then your boss tells you that the LED will emit light when there's two volts applied across it. So in other words, the LED needs two volts to operate. Otherwise, it will not emit light. And then the other part is that you have to have a, count that, a countdown timer that will count two seconds because the LED will turn on only after, two, after you press the button for two seconds. So press the button for two seconds, count one, two, two. You need two volts in order to light on the LED. Okay. Sounds what? easy. What? Timer. Timer. You press here, then you have to count the time, and then you need some voltage to apply to the LED. The what? first thing I'm going to ask you, what block or tool you have in your pocket that allows you to count time? Capacitor. What'd you say? You said capacitor. He said capacitor. Capacitor. Oh, clever. Cool. Yeah? Why capacitor? Because capacitor is changing over time. What changes in the capacitor over time? The voltage. The voltage. Because it depends on how much charge you can, you can store the capacitor. Oh, you guys, you guys learn. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's, um, let's describe our strategy in block diagrams. So here comes uh, what you, you asked about the V in, right? So instead of V in, now what's the action that we have? Push a button, right? 
So I'm going to say here, this is going to start. So I have to push the button that starts my design. Yeah. Then when the push, when I push the button, what's going to be my first block? What am I first block here doing? It's turning on the timer. Turn on the timer. Okay, then what's the next block? Measure two seconds is the timer itself, right? I'm going to time two seconds. Okay, then after two seconds, what's going to happen? I have not only an LED, I have to provide voltage to the LED, right? So after there was two seconds here, I have to provide a voltage that is larger or equal to two volts, right? That's a, uh, that's a block that has to be telling me if the voltage is there or not. Which block gives you that? Very good. And then finally, we apply, we apply two volts. Very good. And you're doing that in circuits? Hmm? You're doing this in circuits? I am. What? Not alone, though. The students are going to help us. No. It's step like by step. Not programming it? Not programming, <laughs> no. Wow. No. There are so many people that can program. Okay. Tell me, tell me, what are we going to use? Okay, I have a implementation now. What are we going to use to turn on the circuit? Switch. I heard the switch. Is switch a good approach? Let's make for you, Mickey, how make all the components think. Switch. Or as much as I can. Switch. Switch. <laughs> timer. Timer. The timer uh, that we wanted was a capacitor, right? Because that is a block that we can, we know things are going to be changing over time. Do we just use a capacitor or a capacitor with something else? Mm. I'm going to draw the capacitor. TV. What is going to happen if that block that we want to do the timing, which is a capacitor, and there will, well, there will be a voltage capacitor changing over time here, TV just connected TV. like this. TV to the T. TV to the T equals. Nothing happens, right? So what do we need to connect to that capacitor in order to have some action here? Voltage source. What did you say? Voltage source. Voltage source. Okay. What, uh, what would happen if we connect a voltage source? We did that analysis. You still have the same voltage. So what would be the best solution here for us? A current source, an alternate current source. Oh, very good. Okay. A current source. Why? because we know that when we use a current source, right, we know that I see the current here can be given by capacitance, which is given by the capacitor that we choose, DVCDT. So we provide the current and then we will have that VC over time as a function of time is going to be given by I S, which is the current source, over, over the capacitance times T plus the voltage, uh, the VC when time is equal to zero. We have done this analysis for our capacitance uh, touch. 
I mean, they could use a voltage source in 16B with something else, but that's yeah, 16B, yeah. otherwise it's too complicated. Yeah, uh, yeah. 16B, but you know, if you want to use a voltage source. Right, for a timer. Okay, and then this, this um, term here is going to be our V time. Okay, and then what block, what block can we use in order to tell us if we have two volts or not? Comparator. So we could use a um, operational amplifier as a comparator where we're going to have a minus and plus here. We're going to have we are going to have a V out here. Um, and then what would be the, oops, I'm already giving you the answers. What would be the rail, uh, the rails that we would choose? What would be VSS and, v and VDD that we choose for this? Zero and two, because we can connect this um, to ground, connect this VDD to two volts, then the op amp will compare. If um, a signal is uh, smaller than uh, two volts, it will rail to zero. If it's equal or higher, it will rail to two volts. So you know that for sure the LED will be receiving two volts, yeah? Because we limit it now, right? We limit it to two volts. Now it might be becoming more clear what's the function of VSS and VDD, yeah? Okay, let's put it all together and see if it works. Draw, draw all together. I have a question. How would you first, um, well, I will draw it all together. Um, okay, I'll have a current source here. And then I am going to have a switch because we, we wanted to turn the timer on, right? A switch, and then a capacitor. This capacitor is important to me because it's going to be giving me V time. This is going to be IS. Okay, then I am going to connect this to uh, the comparator where I have two volts here, ground here. Um, well, I don't need to say zero and ground. Okay. Oh, and the minus. What do I do with the minus now? Um, and then here will be V lead for light emitting diode. Okay. What do I do with the minus of the amplifier? Connect to where? Connect to two volts? Yeah. Why? Then you'll be comparing two volts to two volts. You could set uh, what uh, there was a question before, a more generic answer with a V rep right? A voltage that you know of, that you can use as reference. And then what would be a good voltage to have as reference? What was important here in the design? It should only turn it on after two seconds, right? So what would be a good voltage for your V reference in this design? V time, right? You were, you were telling me this equation, which we call V time. That's right. 